Welcome, my name is Chelsea and I help run the Community Investment Program along with Colleen. Our office is known by a lot of different names, Lodge Grants, SIP Grants, Programs Department, um, and many more. However, if you're looking for grants, we are the people to contact. We are here almost every Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So please give us a call or email us and we are more than happy to provide program information and assistance. Our contact information is included at the end of the webinar. So we are debuting a new grant um, called the Spotlight Grant this year. We're very excited about it. Every lodge will have the opportunity to use this $2,000 grant to shine a light on two important issues facing nearly every American community, family literacy and homelessness among our nation, nation's veterans. Every lodge is eligible for this grant. The lodge does not need to meet the GER's per member giving goal to receive it. Applications open on the same day as the rest of our SIP grants, which is April 1st, 2019, and closes December 31st, 2019. Your projects must be completed by March 31st, 2020. So let's go over um, some of the rules uh, for the Spotlight Grant. So while elk, elk serve communities in numerous ways, the Spotlight Grant is an opportunity to focus on two key areas, family literacy and veterans homelessness. We want you to serve your communities in ways that will raise the largest profile, energize membership, encourage former members to return to the fold and gain the notice of people who want to be a part of an organization doing big things. And for that reason, Spotlight Grants must follow active lodge led project plans to qualify for funding. So, one of the first requirements is that of the focus area. Projects must include a significant family literacy activity or directly address the needs of veterans experiencing or at risk of homelessness. It also must be lodge-led. The lodge to oversee project details and grant funds. Spotlight grants cannot be a donation of supplies or funds and cannot be split between multiple projects. The lodge must select one project, demonstrate the need, and implement the project in the community. The project plan must be followed as outlined. So this is a little different from any of our other grant offerings and that we provide the project plan and the lodge must follow in and adapt it to its community. So we'll be going over those seven projects in a moment. The first project is called the Warm Welcome to the Library. So you would partner with the local library to provide coats to children in need and introduce families to all that their neighborhood library branch has to offer. This project is done in um, partnership with Operation Warm. As you might have already heard, last year we started up a partnership with the organization to provide coats to children in need. Um, they have a another project that uh, requires partnerships with the library and we wanted to promote that as a good literacy project for lodges to do. So this program connects families with their local library and provides libraries with the opportunity to showcase their services and programs. By giving each child a brand new coat so when they attend the event, a warm welcome to the library program fulfills an urgent need while simultaneously encouraging literacy and learning at local libraries. So the first step of doing this project would, to be, would be to find a library. Before applying for this project, contact your public library to review the program objectives and get their buy-in. Once the largest public library agrees to participate, visit Operation Warm's community partner registration page to make an account and review a step-by-step -step guide for hosting a successful event. Please note, this program costs approximately $4,000 to complete, so consider combining a beacon gratitude or promise grant to complete this project. Step two would be to identify children in need. You want to work with local connections to identify families and invite up to 150 disadvantaged children to attend the event. Examples of organizations to reach out to include schools, the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Head Start, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Step three, 
would be to help children get properly fitted. So coordinate staff and volunteers to help the event run smoothly. Examples of volunteer roles include helping children get properly fitted for a coat, registering children for library cards, or leading various activity stations. The roles are entirely dependent on the needs of the lodge and its event. And lastly, you want to make it your own. Invite a balloon artist or a puppeteer or create a make-believe dress-up area with the mirror and props. Activities will contribute to making your coat giving a memorable experience. The second project is called Suds and Stories. So you make the local laundromat a center for childhood literacy and development while guests do their laundry. Elks entertain children with literacy events, literacy activities, excuse me. The research is pretty clear. Parents of very young children who talk to, read, and engage with them as often as possible help build literacy skills at an early age, an educational foundation that can give kids a jump start on future academic success. What we also know is that parents of very young children usually have to do a lot of laundry. Low-income families tend to bring their kids with them to public laundromats. Using a spotlight grant, your lodge can transform the local library into a center for early childhood development and children's education. While the guests do their laundry, children are safely engaged and entertained with activities, including music, reading, coloring, face painting, and more. I want to be clear that for this project to qualify, there has to be a, a significant literacy component to the project. So your activities should really focus on literacy um, and to make sure that you keep the children engaged, you want to find fun literacy activities. So here are the steps to organizing a successful project. Step one would be to identify a local laundromat. Before planning an event, you can locate a local laundromat that is willing to partner with the lodge. The business owner may want to contact the Laundry Cares Foundation, which frequently seeks out laundromats to host free laundry day events and provide liter literacy resources to underserved communities. So if you all are interested in partnering with them to do that, I would suggest uh, having the owner contact them. Um, to ensure attendance, lodges should consider laundromats within walking distance for families with transportation restrictions and close to motels, low-income housing, shelters, or city transit stops. Additionally, ideal laundromats should have a sufficient number of working machines to handle the number of families that might attend. Step two, identify families in need. Examples of groups to target include schools with high percentages of low-income families, the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Determine laundry logistics. After securing a laundromat, determine the number of washers and dryers on site and the average cost per load. You want to make sure you have all the funds you need to make this successful. The lodge will also need to decide how long to hold an event. For example, is it going to be two or three hours? Um, if it will limit the number of loads per family and what supplies it will offer to those families. So I have seen um, some examples of projects um, in which uh, parents might sign up on Eventbrite um, to register or you hand out tickets on a first come first serve basis. So that's an idea for lodges who are considering their project to handle the amount of families that might uh, come. And lastly, you want to make it your own. In order to qualify, the event must include a literacy component geared towards children. Some ideas include hosting a story time, providing free books to all children who attend, and other literacy building activities. Our next project is Imagination Library. This organization was launched by country music star Dolly Parton and the Dollywood Foundation um, and provides um, children with a free hardcover book every month from birth to age of five. Lodges are encouraged to support the Imagination Library by becoming a program partner. So uh, the Lodge will promote the program, register children with the Imagination Library, and fund the books and mailing. And once the child is registered, the Dollywood Foundation takes over sending the child a new book each month. For this project to qualify, Lodges must host a kickoff event to enroll children in the program. To get started, 
you would need to visit the Imagination Library site locator to determine if there is an existing program in your area. You don't want to duplicate uh, existing services. So if there is a program that already exists, the Lodge must partner with them to host an enrollment event. Typically, uh, local United Ways or libraries might already be a part of Imagination Library. So if that's the case, um, the Lodge should reach out to them and see uh, how the Lodge uh, can be active in that. If an area does not have a program, the Lodge must register to start one. The Imagination Library will assign a regional director to help you along the way. Immediately upon completing the form, uh, a two-step form. You will receive both your regional director's contact info and a quick start guide designed to assist you with the initial stages of starting a program. So uh, with all of that uh, getting started, uh, the next part would be of course to define your area um, of need. So the Imagination Library is a free gift that can be given to children um, residing in a predetermined postcode, postcode, school district, town, county, or even an entire state. Um, per program guidelines, children should not be excluded based on any other factors other than age and residence. So, for example, uh, children six years of age cannot be enrolled in the program. Um, or if the lodge can only fund 80 children, it should consider focusing on a particular area, maybe um, the largest city or just within its county. Step three would be to identify a nonprofit partner. According to program requirements, your lodge must have a local 501c3 agency on board as a key collaborator. So due to postal regulations, the return address on all books must be that of a local 501c3. That is because nonprofit organizations receive a, a special uh, pricing from USPS. Um, so this is why it's critical that the lodge use a registered 501c3 as its uh, mailing address. This uh, same address must also be listed as the contact on your registration brochure. Lodges may not use the Elks National Foundation as its local agency. So search for a local organization. As I've said before, typically United Ways, public libraries uh, tend to do these programs. So reach out to them uh, as your nonprofit partner. That's a critical component of this project. And lastly, host the kickoff event. With your nonprofit partner, plan a fun-filled kickoff event for your program. The event should have a registration area where participants can enroll their children and ask questions. So, fun fact, we consider Dolly Parton the patron saint of the Community Investments Program. One of our lodges sent in a photo of uh, themselves holding a check with a Dolly uh, Parton uh, cutout. And so we have it uh, hanging in our office. So we were very excited to be doing this project. Project number four, the community baby shower. So access to books is an important factor in children's literacy, yet in many of the same low-income areas where diaper uh, where diaper need is high, so is the need for books. One study shows that in low income communities, there's an average of one book per 300 children. This is in stark contrast to middle income communities where on average, there are 13 books in a single home. So without basic items like diapers and wipes, infants are at risk for health issues and are not able to enroll in childcare centers, impacting their parents' ability to work or attend school. Help parents raise a generation of healthy, active readers by coupling a community baby shower with an early learning initiative. So when you start in this project, you want to determine the need. Before applying, think of groups to target, including, including local hospitals, women's shelters, or other organizations that provide services to newborns and parents in need. Step two is to make it a success. Inform your coworkers, friends, family members, other lodge members and neighbors about the event and encourage them to donate. The most needed items are diapers of all sizes, wipes, formula, blankets, onesies, bottles, and of course, the literacy component, which is children's board books. 
Step three would be to partner with your community. So consider partnering with local agencies, vendors, or community groups that can provide workshops on topics such as growth and development, healthy food and nutrition, preterm labor, and safety and play. You want to jazz it up a bit and make it your lodge's special project. So remember, the lodge's project must incorporate literacy. Consider partnering with local libraries, schools, or universities that can provide information and resources for parents to help develop literacy skills in young children. If this is a family-friendly baby shower, include literacy activities for children in attendance. Project number five, we are now transitioning into our veterans projects. So the first one being the Welcome Home Initiative. So as you know, uh, the Elks National Foundation has made a commitment to uh, helping to eradicate homelessness with uh, the VA. And so this is kind of an extension of our commitment to ending veterans homelessness by offering this opportunity to lodges. So. If you don't know what Welcome Home is, when veterans transition into permanent housing, they often don't have the basic items needed to set up a household. Welcome Home kits are a great way to provide cleaning supplies, bedding, small appliances, and kitchen items that will help veterans be prepared and feel comfortable in their new homes. The ENVSC has a great guide to this program, and you can find that on their website. If you go to the Elks National Foundation and uh, click on Veteran Services, you can find more about what to include in a welcome home kit. So um, members can help uh, veterans establish their homes by building welcome home kits. So generally this kit would include some small furniture, kitchenware, and cleaning supplies. Items can be new or used, donated or purchased, of course. So step one, determine the need. Look for local veteran housing programs that will refer your lodge to veterans in need or new home supplies. Find out if you would be able to deliver supplies directly to veterans or if you'll need to distribute kits through your partner org organization. Every VA medical center has at least one person on staff who focuses on veterans experiencing homelessness, and larger VAs have HUD VASH, which caters specifically to these veterans. Many cities also have CRRCs, which are resource centers for veterans in need of housing assistance. But don't forget about independent nonprofit organizations that serve veterans like Volunteers of America or Salvation Army. Step two is to make your project successful. Secure a place to store household items you're collecting for donation. Consider if you'll need to rent a truck or find volunteer elks to transport large items. If the need in your area exceeds $2,000, consider making additional kits and submitting the receipts to be reimbursed through Veteran Services Welcome Home Kit Program. And lastly, make it your own. When it's time to deliver the kits, throw a housewarming party for the veterans. If the kit recipients are anonymous, lodge members could create handwritten letters of appreciation to include with donated items. Establish an adoptive veteran program with your lodge to offer continuing support for veterans in their new homes. When building kits, keep the recipients in mind. Each veteran may have special requests, a radio, a coffee maker, sheets for the, ch the child's bed, it could be anything. For example, in Hopkins, Minnesota, the lodge does a welcome home initiative, and one of the veterans noted that when he uh, was finally housed, he would have a potluck, potluck, um, a pot roast uh, to celebrate. And he kept telling the lodge, like, all I want to do is have my pot roast. The lodge decided to deliver those items from the welcome home kit and even bought him a crock pot. And they made that, um, that pot roast for him. So just think about um, those things when working with different veterans. All veterans aren't the same and they might have particular needs. The next one is the stand down. The original stand down for homeless veterans was modeled after the stand down concept used during the Vietnam War. This was meant to provide a safe retreat for units returning from combat operations to take care of personal hygiene, get clean uniforms, enjoy warm meals, receive medical and dental care, mail and receive letters, and enjoy the camaraderie of friends in a safe environment. Stand downs provided soldiers with 
the opportunity to renew their spirit, health, and overall sense of well-being. Standouts are one to three day events coordinated by local VA medical centers and other service providers to offer various services and resources. To get started, if there's already a stand-down event in your community, this is your largest opportunity to get involved in a big way. Contact the stand-down point of contact to get started. If your community does not hold a stand-down, create one. To qualify for funding, Elks must be actively involved in volunteering at the stand-down, and funds should be used to provide vital supplies or services for the veterans. For example, Elks can actively support dental services by volunteering to set up the area, scheduling appointments, or providing kits with dental hygiene supplies to veterans as they complete their visit. Research the need. Do your research. Talk to other volunteers about what they've learned from participating in past stand downs. Keep in mind that some items like dress shirts or extra large clothing are often donated less frequently. Also, um, from my experience doing stand downs uh, with the Elks National Foundation here in Chicago, a lot of times there aren't items for women. So please keep that in mind. We have a number of female veterans that may come to stand downs and they need services as well and supplies as well. And lastly, make it your own. Distribute supplies in a reusable backpack or tote bag with their lodge's name on it to offer continued support, include invitations to meals or other events that your lodge will provide for veterans in need. Our last project that we are offering is the Adopt a Haven. So this project is for lodges that can identify an emergency shelter or transitional housing facility specifically for veterans in their community. It can be difficult to change habits and transition from a life on the street, but else can help provide social and material support. So the grant must be used to provide support such as Elks led landscaping, painting, maintenance projects, providing dinner service for at least one week, running a workshop to teach a skill at the facility or holding regular social events for veterans like game or movie nights. So to get started, contact the facility's activities director or social services representative to access real needs. Working with the staff will help ensure that your activity has the greatest, most lasting impact. The grant must be used to provide support such as Elks led landscaping, slash painting, maintenance projects, providing dinner service for at least one week, running a workshop to teach a skill at the facility, or holding regular social events for veterans like game or movie nights. So I know you heard me just say that, but I want to reiterate that those are the type of activities that we are looking for. Next, you want to recruit volunteers. So let the activities director know that the lodge is coming at least two weeks in advance. Since visitors may be rare, the activities director will probably add your visit to the calendar of events so that residents can look forward to you to look forward to seeing you. Also, make sure that you've recruited volunteers from the lodge to come assist. So that one-on-one -on -one FaceTime is very valuable to veterans who may not have uh, a lot of contact with family members. And next, um, when you're there, be a friend. Ask questions, listen to their thoughts and concerns, visit regularly, send cards, check in with phone calls, invite veterans to be guests at lodge meals and events. Remember, birthdays, special events, and especially holidays. Elks can coordinate a wide array of activities, including hosting arts and crafts, planning a barbecue and musical performances, or even delivering much needed toiletries to residents. Some things to consider are that cards, small gifts, and donations of necessary supplies are common items, so please clear all gifts with the facility beforehand, though. Additionally, many stores may offer a discount for a charitable project if you ask. So, that is our presentation on the Spotlight Grant. I just want to give a quick overview uh, that we do have a toolkit on our website available on the Spotlight Grant homepage. So, the toolkit gives a grant overview. Also, it provides a detailed step-by-step -step project plan, which I just uh, went over uh, with each project, and some sample applications. Um, we also have, in the very uh, last pages, some frequently asked questions ask questions that we've kind of um, um, thought that lodges might 
have about starting this project. So, but of course, if you still have questions, you can email us or give us a call. Um, as I said, have questions about the Spotlight Grant? It is totally new. I ask that you be patient with us as we try to think through the projects and any of the uh, issues that lodges may have. This is our first year doing it, and as we pilot it, of course, there will be issues that come up. But if you have questions and you need guidance, contact us. Our number is 773-755-4730, and our email is lodgegrants at elks.org. Thank you for listening.